Hi guys, today we're looking at a French carbine with a very long bayonet. This isn't the first time we've looked at a cavalry carbine with a long bayonet. A while back we looked at the Crespi breechloader with a rather long spear bayonet. By the mid-19th century, many major militaries were beginning to hunt for a reliable and robust breechloading system. France was no exception, with a number of systems trialled during the 1850s, following the Prussian adoption of the Dreiser rifle. Today, we're lucky enough to be examining one of France's early breechloaders, with some very interesting features. The Arcelon. Perhaps properly described as Le Mousquetin Arcelon 1856, the carbine has the distinction of being the first French breechloader to have a distinct bolt handle. Designed by Charles Arcelon, a graduate of the École Spéciale Militaire de saint and a veteran of the Napoleonic Wars. In the 1820s, Arcelon began his ordnance career, working in arms factories in Mudzig, Saxony and Strasbourg. In 1839, he became the director of Tool Arsenal and developed a conversion for flintlock muskets to the percussion system in 1842. He subsequently became director of Châtellerault Arsenal between December 1841 and September 1842, and again from December 1849 to August 1852. It was during this period that Arcelon developed his breechloader. Following his work developing the percussion conversion, Arcelon set about developing a breechloading system, and in June 1853, a prototype cavalry carbine was tested at Vincennes. The prototype fired 130 rounds before its action fouled and seized up. Despite this, the observers were impressed, including France's Emperor Napoleon III. A letter from the cabinet of the Emperor, dated August 4, 1856, stated, The Emperor wants General Arcelin for having Châtellerault manufacture 300 carbines with a movable breach of the model which has been tested at Vincennes, and which gave satisfactory results and in addition, 100 reserve cavalry sabres, 100 line cavalry sabres, and 100 light cavalry sabres, which will be attached at the end of the carbines. The sabres, as well as the carbines of a new model, which has been established on the personal indications of the Emperor. These weapons are intended to be tested in three regiments of the Imperial Guard. At the beginning of October, the order was reduced to 100 carbines. On the 7th of October, it was proposed that Châtellerault would provide 180 carbines and sabres. A manufacturing report dating from the 5th of April 1857, signed by Arcelin, specified that 111 carbines and sabres had been produced. Despite this, sources suggest that by June 1857, the carbine order had been reduced again by the French War Ministry to 96, giving a total of just 32 per regiment for testing. This carbine is marked 108 in a number of places, which would support the total of 108 carbines being made. It would also make this example the last of the trials prototypes to be manufactured. While some sources refer to the sabres as sabre lances, this was not their designation or their purpose, nor were the weapons issued to Napoleon's Squadron de saint Garde, the Emperor's personal guard, as some sources suggest. Instead, they were issued to three regiments of cavalry. The Reserve Cavalry's 1st Regiment of Carbines, or the Cavalerie de Reserve, Premier Regiment des Carabiniers. The Line Cavalry's Empress's Dragoons, or the Dragon de l'Imperatrice. And the 1st Hussar Regiment of the Light Cavalry, or the Premier Regiment de Hussar. Once the contract for the 108 Trials Carbines had been confirmed, Arcelin set about refining and producing the guns at Châtellerault. He recruited a promising young gunsmith, Antoine Chaspeau, who had been working at the arsenal since 1851, to work on the project. What Chaspeau's input on the project was is largely unknown, although his work with Arcelin clearly influenced his own later work. The Arcelin carbine used a paper cartridge with a 21 gram, 12 mm projectile, propelled by 3 grams of black powder. It was still ignited by a percussion cap and had a back action lock. The breech locked by a pair of opposing threaded screws and by a lug in the base of the action. The carbine weighed 3.2 kilograms or just over 7 pounds or was 1.81 meters or 46.4 inches in length with a 76.5 centimeter or 30 inch barrel. To operate the carbine, first the action was opened 
rotating the bolt handle up 90 degrees, and then pulling the bolt backwards. A cartridge would then be slid into the breech, and the action pushed forward, and the bolt rotated downwards. The percussion lock was then brought to half cock, a cap placed on the nipple, and then the lock would be brought to full cock, and the weapon could be fired. And as the carbine fired a paper cartridge, there was no need for the extraction of a spent case. The trial of the carbine was carried out alongside that of another new breech loader, a pinfire falling block action developed by Antoine Tre de Beaulieu, chambered in a 9mm round. General Tre de Beaulieu is perhaps best known for his rifling system for artillery. The carbines and sabres were issued and ready to begin trials at the beginning of April 1857. By the autumn of 1857, following testing by various units, the arcelant was rejected. The artillery commission found that the lack of obturation at the breach led not only to gas escaping the action and being unpleasant and somewhat dangerous for the user, but also that the fouling of the interrupted thread which locked the action led to jamming, and in a number of cases the folding bolt handles of the arcelon carbines were broken by troopers attempting to force the actions open. Excuse this brief interruption guys, I just wanted to ask you to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss future videos. We need all the help we can get to overcome YouTube's algorithms, so please drop us a like and if you have any questions about the video, please leave us a comment and we'll happily answer them. This all helps new people discover our videos. Similarly, as I always say, please share the videos with friends. Tab owes many of our viewers to those who share the videos on social media, in forums, and with anyone who might be interested. Tab is an entirely viewer-supported project, so if you'd like to support the channel further, check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to follow us over on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. Right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now, for that rather impressive bayonet. The French had a penchant for sabre bayonets, dating back to the 1840s, and will continue to use them right into the 1870s. The sabre seen on this carbine is not the exact pattern which would have been paired with Arcelon's carbine. In these photos we can see the 1856 pattern Arcelon sabre, which would have been mounted on the carbines. The hilt style is slightly different, and the lug under the barrel doesn't quite interface with the catch on the sabre. The sabre itself is based on the Model 1854 sabre, a double fullered one metre long straight sword, manufactured just like the carbines at Châtellerault. The sword with this carbine is marked Dragon Model 1854, suggesting it was issued to a Dragoon regiment, who only began receiving the Model 1854 in the mid-1860s. The blade's markings support this, as it is also marked June 1865. From the final report on the trial of the Arcelor, we gain some insight into how the sabre bayonet was used. In their final report, in October 1857, the Hussars noted that when used as a bayonet, the sabre could only practically be used on foot, describing its use on horseback as impossible. They felt that firing the carbine could only be accurately done so at short range, as the weight of the fixed sabre made the carbine ungainly, heavy and unbalanced. The units did, however, appreciate the defence that the sabre bayonet offered to a dismounted trooper. A passage from the translated report reads, The use of the sabre as a bayonet gives the man a means of defence which he did not have with the old weapons. The straight sabre is light, perfectly in hand and excellent for pointing. The firing of the new weapon, sabre at the end of the barrel, was carried out with the hussars and did not give place to any important observation. As expected, the shot, or accuracy, becomes less fair because the weapon is too heavy and less well maintained by the rider. The sabre used as a bayonet makes it a powerful weapon. It appears that 60 of the sabre bayonets were later adapted to be mounted on the saint etienne built 1858 Chasse-Peau breech loading carbines which were trialled subsequently. These carbines still used their percussion lock, but had a fixed bolt handle, and a rubber obturating ring near the bolt head, and the actions were rear locking. This system would eventually evolve into the Fusil Model 1866, the Chasse-Peau. Gas obturation was a key issue for many early breech loaders, and would be for some time. General Arcelon's carbine, 
can be seen as an important footnote in the development of the Chasseau rifle which would follow it. The general died in 1868, aged 73. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Arcelon carbine, and do forgive me for stumbling over any of my French pronunciations. Special thanks to the Cody Firearms Museum at the Buffalo Bill Centre of the West for allowing us to take a look at this really interesting carbine and sabre. And special thanks to my good friend Danny Michael for sending some extra photographs and video to help put this together. If you enjoyed the video, please do share it with friends and help spread the word about our work. And if you aren't already, please do subscribe, like the video, and do leave us a comment as well. I'm always happy to discuss these firearms. You can support the project through Patreon, and there's a link to that in the description box below. And as always, if you head over to www.thearmorersbench.com, you will find an accompanying article for this video where we list all of our sources. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.